Okay, so this uh, presentation, uh, again, is taking haiku off the page, haiku movies and social media. Uh, Jamie Wimberly is a longtime haiku poet and painter. His work appears regularly in the leading haiku journals and his first book of haiku, Before I Forgot, Forget Them, was published last year. Jamie's haiku movies have won a number of awards and uh, I'm gonna uh, put in the chat his different accounts for everyone to copy them. Okay, so, oh, there I, they are. Should I, should I share my screen now? Uh, yeah, you, you, you certainly can. Okay, go ahead. Okay, can everyone see that? Yes, I, I definitely can see it. Uh, looks like I think everyone can. Anyone who cannot unmute yourself, but I'm seeing it very clearly. Okay, great. Well, I wanna welcome everyone. Um, it's a huge pleasure for me and an honor to be able to, to uh, present to you guys. I, I was going through um, all the different um, poets that are on uh, today's conference and, and it's amazing to me, again, uh, how many folks that uh, over the years, I, I see their names and now I can start to place a face to them. So, um, and I wanna give a shout out to Jay and the Haiku Society of America. Um, you know, the, these guys have done a great job, not only with this conference, but also, um, you know, I think HSA is in a much stronger position than it has been over, you know, the past couple of years. So, I mean, great job, Jay and and, um, and Ignatius. Uh, thank you for all the work that you do too. And welcome to Tom as the new editor of Frog Pond. So we're gonna talk about um, haiku, but a little bit differently. Um, Uh, and I'm going to start off with a challenge question. Um, so many of us, obviously, we experience haiku through our writing. We, um, you know, basically also, you know, submit to our favorite journals or share as part of a reading circle. However, uh, as you know, um, you know, you kind of know what you're looking for. And so what if we first started with the medium, you know, social media in order to introduce the poetic form? In other words, what if we took haiku off the page and engaged a broader audience to collaboration? So that's a challenge because basically, basically as, as we know, I mean, a lot of us um, were first uh, experienced haiku uh, when we were children and it's one of the first poetic forms that we learned. And quite frankly, um, a lot of folks are still stuck on counting syllables and the rules around haiku. Um, and it was kind of even in the in the chat um, in terms of, you know, uh, you know, really kind of appreciating the haiku first uh, rather than jumping right into the syllables. So I think that, you know, social media is one way to kind of reach a broader audience um, than than the folks that um, are in the Haiku Society of America or others. And there's a long tradition of this, as you guys know, um, you know, Haiga, um, you know, it's been around for a long time. Um, traditionally combined brush painting and haiku and calligraphy um, and, and, and used all three of those elements. Um, what's interesting to me, though, it created a space and energy and, and, and a relationship to the, the poem and, and then what was shown visually. Um, and, and there could be a further leap, as, as, as you can see here, um, in terms of moving away from just, you know, a focus on the poem, but also giving it a visual context. So there's a long history here. And, and you can see here, you know, classic to contemporary. Um, I mean, these two images, um, you know, one is a very traditional one hundreds of years ago, um, you know, and then you look at uh, this one with, um, that was in prune juice and not too long ago. Uh, free fall, my plan to lose weight, um, using, uh, you know, photography, obviously it was edited, but it, it, it remains, the aesthetic remains kind of in the, in the realm of, of Haiga, even from a classical standpoint. 
Um, and this is one of my recent posts. Um, we're going to get into uh, Instagram and Twitter and other things. Um, but again, you know, it's, as you'll hear, um, oftentimes I will kind of test the poem itself using one platform and then I'll put it on Instagram uh, with an image. Um, and this one, I think definitely, um, you know, the combination of that uh, image with this poem uh, made, made the whole thing a lot stronger and certainly more emotional. So the poem, Fading Light, I Help Her Remember My Name. So what we're going to do today is we're going to um, both kind of go through a how-to and then we're going to kind of explore what's possible using social media and different forms of media. Um, again, uh, another example of uh, Haiga, um, which I liked a lot. It, 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 again, it mirrored uh, some of the traditional Japanese sumie or black ink um, kind of painting feel to it, even though it's a photo. It's, it's a photo. Um, and again, more cold, my imagination going where, nowhere. Um, I think, again, really nice image with that uh, particular poem. Um, before, before we go to uh, the different um, platforms, though, I, I think we need to understand, and I'm, intuitively, I'm, I'm sure you do, um, but, you know, social media, especially over the pandemic, has just exploded, okay? So, you know, just the daily act of social media users are about half the planet. Um, and so 3.78 billion people use social media every day. Um, and, and it's very skewed, though, between the generational. So basically, um, you know, a lot of the folks on, on this webinar are net 65 and above. So, you know, half of you statistically speaking are, are using social media on a, on a daily basis. Um, but the younger you get, uh, the more they're using it. Um, I know I have two teenagers and they basically have grown up on that. Um, so again, part of what we're doing here when we think about social media and haiku is thinking about a expanding our audience, uh, and, and the possibility of engaging more people, but also, um, specifically engaging younger people. And quite frankly, you know, one of the things some of you know, um, you know, I, I approached Jay and the executive team of, of the Haiku Society of America with this idea of 40 under 40, um, which has been a huge success of bringing younger poets. And actually one of the poets that I've been working with, James uh, Nippon, is on this. So it was good to see him. Um, and then HSA has taken it off and basically have done a, a wildly successful mentoring program. Um, and then also I have done, uh, I know Aaron has been working on um, social hour, haiku hours, happy hours kind of thing, um, which is great because again, I think one of the things as a society, what we're trying to do is not only learn from one another, but also trying to engage our um, other poets, uh, and especially younger ones. Um, this, this kind of is scary to look at because um, it shows you a, a condensed form actually of the landscape of social media. and and. And it can seem overwhelming because there's so many different platforms and tools and reasons for using social media. Um, some of it is for, um, you know, private use. Some of it's for public use. Some of it's for marketing and so on. Um, but you know, social media is definitely um, a huge factor in, in you know society and our, in our, and our lives. So, um, and but we're going to specifically focus on a few uh, platforms. Um, before I do, though, I wanted to kind of give you a to-do list. Again, I want this to be as practical as possible. Um, so some of the things that, you know, if you're thinking about using social media or if you are, um, these are just some kind of to-dos I put together. I mean, social media is just that. It's social. You know, so spend the time following others, uh, liking the work and providing comments. Um, a lot of folks I've noticed, you know, they throw stuff up on social media and they don't engage. And then they wonder why um, they're not kind of getting that, you know, that what they expected out of it. Um, I would recommend using different platforms. Um, as you're going to see, I use Twitter and Instagram. Um, if you start to use different pa uh, platforms, you can link them together and you can leverage what you're doing. So if you're going to do the work anyways, I mean, you're going to write the poem and you're going to get it out there. Um, using different platforms can be, um, can be helpful. Um, I would say that if you're going to go uh, into this route, 
Um, one of the things I see a lot of on social media is that, especially if you're new to it, um, they are kind of just throwing stuff out there um, and not taking the time to curate the images in or take the pictures. Um, so again, um, you know, to be really, you know, engaging on social media, uh, it's good to have some knowledge about how to use basic editing tools. Um, we're going to talk about a lot about collaboration. Um, social media really has resulted in a number of interesting opportunities for myself um, that I didn't expect. Um, I think uh, social media offers an opportunity to experiment with different media and styles uh, in order to establish your own identity on online. Um, and I personally uh, have a lot of fun with it, and I hope you would too. So let's get into the, the platform. So first is Twitter. Um, this is, I've had this account the longest. Um, it's really easy to set up the account. Um, quite frankly, it's perfect for short poetry. Um, obviously, a lot of people are using Twitter for politics or other things, but there's quite a few poets on there. Um, I post uh, every day. Uh, you can see one of my posts here. This is straight a picture straight off my uh, Twitter account. Um, it's I use it primarily to test new poems um, and to engage with posts not on other platforms. Uh, and as you can see, I can have my website there, so it does draw some traffic to my website. Um, but again, um, I know, and I've used Twitter enough to know um, when I'm kind of playing around with a poem, I'm not quite sure if, it, if I want to take the next step, which would uh, take it into Instagram. Um, but from my rea the reaction I get, so the number of likes and engagement uh, from the Twitter, I have a pretty good idea uh, of what, um, how strong the poem is. Um, so Instagram is my um, primary uh, social media uh, platform. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, you know, one of the things I used to use Facebook um, mostly just to uh, communicate with old friends and family, but I just found that to be getting to, way too overwhelming and negative and obnoxious. Um, it's not, and it wasn't all that great for, um, you know, showcasing haiku. Um, this is Instagram has a huge community of, of poets. Uh, many of the folks that are on on today's Zoom um, are active uh, in terms of uh, Instagram. Um, some of the things about Instagram that make it interesting, there is a premium put on aesthetics, so how it looks. Um, and it, for people that have been on there for a long time, they definitely, they almost develop their own branding, which is, you know, their own color palette, their own way of like posting, um, you know, um, in terms of their feed. So the feed is basically uh, all the posts that you're doing. Um, but, you know, you can see here it's photography, um, but you'll see increasing amount of videos and we'll talk about that. Um, but it's, or just plain text on screen. It doesn't have to have a photo on it. Um, by far, I get the most engagement in regard to uh, daily. I mean, well, I post every other day. So likes, comments, and outreach. Um, you know, I spend about 30 minutes a day. And again, only about a couple minutes of that is to essentially around these posts that I'm putting out there. The rest of the time is just engaging with other other people. Um, so I spend quite a bit of time looking at other people's work, you know, liking that work, commenting on that work, making suggestions. Um, even you know, again, I've developed some nice relationships, friendships over Instagram. Instagram, and and again, the, one of the nice things about social media and Instagram in particular is you're interacting with poets from all over the world. Um, so again, it's, it's interesting to me, I'll get a batch of comments um, as soon as I post and throughout the day. And then the next morning, I'll get another batch of comments from people that were um, in Asia or other places. Um, and as I mentioned, it also results in some other opportunities um, in terms of collaborating or showcasing the work, um, including uh, publishing and some on online anthologies. Um, uh, you know, and other things, um, which some of which I'll talk about. But you can just see here, um, again, if you just put that poem there, which, um, it, you know, again, I think these these poems are, are decent, um, but they, they really pop when you put that image next to them. Um, and one, one note I will say with this one, <laughs> 
Um, so basically when we were kids, we would go up to Lake Michigan or in Michigan, we'd go up to the lakes up there, uh, actually near Traverse city. And, um, and we always called a rainbow fish. And then one of my Instagram followers said, do you mean rainbow fish or rainbow trout? Uh, and they were perfectly right. <laughs> so basically I, I changed the poem. So, um, I actually get editorial, um, some editorial stuff too. So I wanted to, again, in the spirit of the how-to part of this, um, you know, if you were interested in doing this, and, and again, I know that many of you already are posting on Instagram, but you basically you just select a poem. You know, I write almost every day. Um, so, you know, I have a number of poems to select. Um, oftentimes, I'll test them on Twitter first. Um, then you select an image, and, you know, I use a variety of sources for the images. Some of it's from Pinterest, some of it's Google search, some of it's my own pics. Um, I insert a poem in the image and you go right up here to do that. That's that's to help uh, edit it. You just hit that and, and it'll allow you to, it'll say text and you type in your poem there. Um, once, uh, and, then I, and then I edit it through using these tools. Now, most phones, I know iPhones, uh, which I use, but most phones have some basic edit, editing tools to the image. So just by doing using these things here, and I and I spend probably uh, you know at least a couple minutes, um, and 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 I almost always um, do a couple of different things. One, I, I oversaturate the colors um, somewhat. I also um, you know using using the editing tools, I make the poem pop. Um, and so um, you know there's cer certain things that I do. And others do because you, again, at, at the end of the day, you're trying to not only showcase the poem, but you're trying to create the right context for that poem. Um, so once you edit the image, um, then you write a very brief caption. Um, you know, for example, if if I'm referencing somebody um, specifically, or if I am using somebody's photo or something like that, um, I'll write. I'll, or if it was published, I always recognize if it was published in what it, in what journal it was published in. Um, so you write a very brief caption, then it's very important to use a lot of hashtags. And the reason why you use a lot of hashtags is that is where uh, you will get new followers um, because basically um, they will, through those hashtags, they will send that image out to, to different, uh, different groups of people that may not be following you. Um, so it is very important to use hashtags and I use actually the same hashtags um, oftentimes. Um, so there's probably about 20 I use regularly. And if you went to my, if you go to my, uh, what I use, you can see, if, if you go to my Instagram account, you can kind of see what I'm using. Um, and I said before, um, once I post, um, cause I have about over 3000 followers now and I, I get um, a lot of comments. Um, so um, it's very important to respond to those comments um, because people are taking the time to recognize your work or interact with you around the work. So it's very important to to um, respond to those comments. And as I said before, I, I spend a fair amount of time throughout the day, uh, maybe batches of a couple minutes, you know, three, four minutes, just going through other people's stuff and looking at it and, and doing the same. Hey, Jamie, this is Shelley real quick. Sorry to interrupt, but would you mind explaining hashtags for uh, uh, folks real quick? So this is a hashtag. A hashtag is an sign and, and then a word. So this is a hashtag. Okay, so basically, um, like for example, with Twitter, this is the only hashtag I use. With um, with Instagram, I'll, you know, I will do, um, so it's always, you know, uh, you know, like this, but with different words. So you'd use like haiku on Instagram or haiku poets. I also um, use poetry or poets. Um, so I'm trying to reach a broader audience uh, of, uh, in the poetry world. Um, I also, since I paint myself, I also um, use like art or art of the day. So, um, so that's a hashtag. And what a hashtag does is again, directs, both directs your work, your post, to a broader audience, but also will start populating your feed. I mean, what you see on Instagram uh, from from that group of people that are posting around that hashtag. 
So I hope that explains it. Thank you. Um, so these are posts from uh, other um, haiku poets. Um, so uh, again, um, you know, and there's different reasons uh, that you might post. For example, Bruce, um, you know, very helpfully, um, which I loved, is basically, you know, trying to introduce uh, a broader audience to haiku. Um, he's basically, you know, pointing to an interview with Jay. Um, so this is kind of a kind of a, a public announcement or, or more of an informative haiku. Um, a lot of folks, and, and I know Terry's on. Um, Terry normally just posts great pictures of her life, but um, she, every once in a while we'll post one of her poems, which I love. Um, and this is one of them. Um, and as you can see, it's a nice composition in terms of the color scheme and, and the way you put that poem. Um, very nice post. Um, and then uh, a different style, but Lucia, um, you know, who many of you know, um, is a very regular um, poet in the journals. Um, whenever she gets published in a journal, she she helpfully, um, you know, publishes it like this. So she didn't, talks about what journal it is and then and then the poems that were in that journal. And I, I like that. Um, and, th and this final one is actually um, my daughter. <laughs> so I asked her to, uh, we started a, a small press uh, about a year and a half ago called Redheaded Press. Um, and so I just gave her carte blanche to essentially pick out poems that she likes. And this, and sometimes they may be haiku, maybe the senru, and maybe none of the, none of those two. But I allow her and her friends to pick out ones. That, and you can see this is a very young kind of aesthetic here. But I can guarantee that uh, this is this would um, get a lot of traction. It does get a lot of traction on Instagram because again, it it, it combines not only a poem but also this look and feel that is, is younger um, so but these, these again a lot of different ways to approach it and different reasons why you might post um, um, but all of this works um, so i started um, a collaboration uh, with a, um, a graphic designer um sasha a uh, piper who's great um and i i said to her you know I'd, it'd be kind of cool to um do these haiku postcards can you work with me to kind of design uh the postcard i want to look like very old-fashioned um so that was the first collaboration i you know basically um collaborating with a graphic designer gave a rough idea what i was looking for but then i that was it you know um but then um then I started, as you can see here, and I know Tia's on, and this is a great poem from Tia, but Dan lines all the little white lies between us. Um, and so I asked Tia if, if I could get her permission and others um, to, to use their poems in this part of this postcard series. Um, and, and finally, there's a collaboration, I think, and pointing to, again, the high, larger haiku community with, you know, looking and, and um, so all these poems have been published, you know, so, um, and then I, one of my own here that was in Modern Haiku. Um, so this is again, a, it's an example of a, a collaboration, not only with um, you know, other uh, other haiku poets, but also a graphic designer and, and then pointing to a larger community. Um, so, um, you know, these, these have been fun to do. Um, so now we're gonna get into the video. Um, so video is increasingly the most engaging content on social media. Um, and you can see that in the popularity of not only video on Instagram, um, but you can certainly see it on TikTok and YouTube. And um, so, you know, most young people um, are very, very active around video. Um, so if you want to essentially reach a, a broader audience and a younger audience, then uh, video might be something that you might want to consider. Um, video can be as simple as using your phone um, or collaborating with somebody. Um, and, and quite frankly, um, it could be just you reading a poem or your poems. Um, there's quite a few um, haiku poets or other poets um, on Instagram, and, and basically they just post them themselves reading their poems. Um, but you can also do uh, even think about doing little shorts, meaning, you know, very quick um, video. It can even just be, you know, a few seconds and you can have a poem associated with that. 
Um, and, and then you obviously you can do full productions and you can see, we're going to, you're going to see some of the full haiku movies that uh, I've done in collaboration with a bunch of other people, but um, there's a ton of different platforms that you can post. You know, we talked about Instagram, um, but certainly um, people are using YouTube, uh, Vimeo, TikTok. Um, one tip is that if you're going to do video, um, besides the editing part, you, you do definitely want to make sure you're aware of lighting because um, movies and and, uh, and video, um, you know, that's probably the biggest thing um, as far as, you know, the quality of, of that work. Um, as you can see here, um, this one of one of recently one of my uh, videos, um, haiku movies, um, was uh, won award at uh, the G Cadence uh, Video Poetry Festival, and, and I point that out simply because um, again, um, using a different medium around haiku um, gets you a larger audience and more opportunities to actually enter contests or other things. Um, than than just simply um, you know submitting haiku um, to to journals. So again, um, you know there's a whole community for uh, videos and movie shorts um, that if you went in that direction, um, again might provide some opportunities. Okay, so this this one um, actually uh, won uh, also won an award recently. Um, and so let me tell you a little bit about the collaboration first of all. Um, so I identify young filmmakers, and usually um, I'm looking for filmmakers that have had um, some experience already, so they they know what they're doing. Um, because it's not only just um, um, you know directing um, these, and these are full movies, really, because there's a cast. So it's somebody that actually knows the whole production process of putting everything together. Um, so basically, it starts off with a treatment what's known as a treatment. So you basically, you, um, you um, write a, a short description of what the shots are gonna be and, and you know, that kind of thing. Um, I should say, um, I give the, the filmmaker uh, a number of poems so they can pick which poem that they like. Um, and so they um, then choose, so that's part of the collaboration. They, they choose which poems they like. Um, they write this treatment, so how they're going to essentially um, uh, film film the short. Um, the, I have an opportunity to look at that and provide suggestions. But again, in the spirit of collaboration, um, I really let them have a lot of leeway in terms of you know, really what's, um, what ends up uh, being filmed. Um, and then there's post-production. Um, so the post-production is... Uh, adding, uh, well, it's editing, it's also adding some music in and, and the voiceover. Um, so, you know, again, it's, these are full movies. So why don't we jump into the questions, shall I? Yeah, okay, so the first one I have, uh... The one about post the if you post to Twitter or Instagram uh, by Max mm -hmm. Berger, I think that was answered. Uh, the question was, do you can you submit to the journal? And I think it depends on the editor. Um, the next uh, question we had. Yes, we that, that's a good that's a good good question because yeah. again, um, the different journals have different rules about you know if you can what they commit or what they consider to be have been published before. So okay. um, again, it, it, you need to pay attention to that. And then the next question is from Hasif uh, Hoff. And can we use Pixabay images for high gas submission? Can, can you, one more time? Can we use Pixabay images for high gas submission? Uh, six of, I'm not, I'm not sure what, uh, six of what images? Oh, okay. I think Ralph posed a really good answer to that in the chat. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Question was about Pixabay images. Can you use Pixabay images in a Haiga? And Michael posted a really good response. Excellent. Great. Thanks, Michael. Okay. Next question for Wick Whiskey Bottle. How did you get the permission to use that music? Is the music in public domain of sorts? And that's for Pony Pete. 
Uh, that's a good question. Um, so again, um, you some some music is in a public domain, um, but quite frankly, all that music is um, is copyrighted. Um, so we basically, um, yeah, I, I worked. You know, one of the nice things is when you, when you're working with an actual director, I mean, they, they and they know all the production stuff, including um, you know the voiceover part, which is you know somebody reading that poem. Uh, and then as well as um, licensing that work. It's not a, a huge deal. Um, the other thing that I've done is work directly with musicians um, to uh, create um, music specific for, for the, the haiku movie. So um, actually uh, a, a new series that hasn't been, hasn't been released yet. Um, all, all of the music, all the compositions are original. Okay, and uh, so is, do you know, the, another question that's related to that, is there a co creative commons for music? Do you know of one? It, well, I mean, the, yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, I mean, again, there is some public use that you can, especially if they're older songs, meaning that they, they're no longer under copyright. Um, there are websites that basically help you uh, connect to or or pick like you would to images um uh songs that you can copyright and then actually a lot of them are very cheap um also you you can reach out directly to um musicians um and see you know here's my project um it's a collaboration it's really um there's no commercial purpose for it whatsoever um do you mind if i use some of your music and i, I do that too uh and and a lot of them are more than happy to to work with us, you know, because they love the project. Okay, and then uh, questions related to that is what is a typical budget for a haiku movie video collaboration? That's from Lorraine Patton. These aren't cheap. <laughs> um, even if you basically, everyone is doing it, um, you know, their labor, let's say their labor is, they're doing it for free. Um, you still need to, these truly are movies, I meaning so you're still, you have a camera crew um, and sometimes you have to pay for some location stuff. So each one of these things costs about a thousand bucks. Okay. Um, but there are ways to make that cheaper. Like again, using the same crew, same, um, same cast, do it all in one, shoot it all in one day, um, and so on. And you can, you know, again, keep the cost down that way. Um, now, if you chose to do um, something of a lesser quality, um, you could you could easily do it for a lot cheaper than that. So, is that including the licensing fee? There was a question about. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, and then uh, we have one from Brenda. Can you tell us the haiku again for the Marlboro Red movie? There were no words like the first. Okay. Yeah, uh, their romance, the length of a marble red. So their romance, the length of a marble red. I, I believe that was published in Modern Haiku, so. Okay, and one more question. Where do you find these people to collaborate with? You know, I always, um, well, first of all, again, I'm active on social media, so I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm engaging at some level with uh, people that way. Um, I'm always looking um, for um, people that I might be able to work with. I might have an idea. Um, you know, for example, I'm in the Atlanta area, and so one of the country's best art schools, SCAD, is is here. Um, so um, I'll start looking at portfolios and reach and reach out directly to. Um, people that are doing interesting work to see see if there might be some oppor opportunity to collaborate. Um, also, again, um, I also leverage my network. So, um, you know, my friends, friends and family. So, okay, and so and some, with... sometimes it's stupid luck. <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes it's just luck. I one time I was in a bar in New York City, and and actually that's how I met Casey. I was in a bar in New York City. We're having a drink. We start talking to this guy, Casey. He starts showing me his music videos, and I'm like, going, "Geez, this is like really great work. Would you ever consider doing a haiku movie?" And he said he agreed right then. 
to do the haiku movie. So I actually met that director at a bar in New York City. And then one from Michelle, uh, how are haiku movies funded? Uh, by me. Oh, by you. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you could probably, you know, there probably could be some grant money or something. Um, you know, a lot of lo local um, arts foundations have, they give small grants to, right to um, right to artists. Um, I know they do that in Atlanta, where I used to live in D.C., they used to do that. So you, you could easily write a, sh a short proposal, and I'm sure it would have a good chance of being picked up, because, they, again, they love when when there's collaborations as far as what they're funding. So. Um, so I think, yeah, I think there's some opportunities for, um, grants, but for these, I, I, I just, I just funded them. And um, one from Jacob is, uh, he's suggesting it would be interesting to have a full length two hour of film with haiku and perhaps panka. And he's also wondering if there are some Japanese films that do this already. Yeah, that's a cool idea. I mean, I have done longer films around poems, and you can see those on my uh, website too. Um, you know, I mean, I think you know, traditional, like especially European, and and probably some Japanese, uh, um, um, you know, cinema. Um, you know, they they allow for more more space, you know, to breathe. You know, so uh, again, I think they have an aesthetic, especially the old school kind, um, that you know, you can kind of see. I don't know, a two hour one, that that might be hard. Um, but you know, um, certainly something longer. I can I can see it, yeah. Okay, and then Lorraine uh has a question about getting a copy of your presentation. And uh I can answer that. Ignatius is going to be uh putting all the presentations um, on a site for everyone after the movie. Okay. I think I caught them all. If I did not, and we're just right at one fifth or time now, ten minutes to the next, or actually seven. So, Jamie, I'd uh, I'd like to say something to Jamie if I could. Mm -hmm. Sure. I, uh, Jamie, I uh, I saw your your haiku movies when uh, they were first available. Uh, they were inspiring. I just want to let you know um, <clears throat> I have a new book coming out very soon, and I made a promotional trailer uh, for it for uh, YouTube. Oh, cool. Excellent. Thanks, well, John. John's modest. He, he's, he's not telling you that he, he's actually an actor. <laughs> Amongst everything else he does for IQ and then and all of the great contributions, he, he actually, uh, I saw, he sent me one of his, his pieces of, of his acting and it was really good. So um, that's good to hear, John. Well, it was making that film where I, uh, where I got the idea to work with the filmmaker on, on a haiku mm -hmm. uh, promotional. Yeah, somebody pointed out to me too that there's uh, the Haiku Foundation is now starting to uh, show some haiku movies too. So that that might be another source of, you know, getting some inspiration. Okay. So Shelly, thank you so much for oh, moderating this, and I'm sorry again to everyone around the, um, the technical glitches. I thought we had that figured out, but I'm glad you've got a chance to at least sense. Uh, it, uh, you got a, a sense of some of what we're doing. And I highly recommend that if you're not on social media to, to really give it a try. Um, I think you'll have fun with it. it. It's not as daunting as you might think it is. It's pretty easy to get started, um, to set up an account. Um, and, and what I enjoy about it, it's always unexpected. You never know what you're going to get back from other people. And I do enjoy um, interacting not only with other haiku poets around the world, but just people in general. Um, and, uh, so I think, I think you'd enjoy it. And, and actually from the Haiku Society of America, I, again, I think it's in the spirit of what we're trying to do together, um, to create a larger community that's welcoming, uh, to younger poets. So again, um, you know, one way to do that is, is doing, uh, some, all of us trying, trying our hand at social media. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Okay, so the uh, next one, the next presenter is going to be open mic poetry readings and uh, Michael Henry Lee will be the moderator for that. So, and that will start probably in about five minutes. Yes, sir.